What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news Over the past few days, it's been a couple days, I, ha I am a bit uh, sick, I don't know if you guys can hear it uh, My voice is uh, stuffy, my ear hurts, I've been feeling terrible, but I'm here to make a video There's been, you know, enough news now to make a video, the news has been quite stagnated I think once the World Cup starts, stuff starts to, you know, kick in, we'll get, you know, news, hopefully videos every other day But... We're back now. We do have some big topics to discuss about. Firstly, salary reduction of Mark Andre Ter Stegen and Frank De Jong. If you don't remember, their contract were you know claimed as criminal over the summer after Laporta did some more deep uh, diving into Bartomeu's renewals. The club under silver reduced their salaries. Frankie De Jong came out speaking with on Dutch duty, venting his frustration about that. But apparently, both players will listen to the club and try their best to help. Alongside that, the club also has to do some contract renewals. They have Alejandro Ball's name on the table, Marcus Alonso, which apparently now is fully agreed to, not fully agreed but the green light has been given to renew Alonso's contract Wuzman Dembele and Naki Pena are now tennis as well we also have some updates of Aruho out on international duty apparently Uruguay want to rush him back but the club don't want that to happen because they don't want another relapse you know you're thinking Omtiti 2.0 so hopefully that's not the case but we'll give you guys the updates on the situation and finally you could say the biggest news over the past few days is that Barcelona is releasing a documentary called A New Era and we're going to discuss what's going to be part of that documentary and how big it could impact Barcelona, the fans, the connections. It is going to be the biggest football documentary ever. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get to 200 likes in this video. Be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it. Now, before we get into the video, this video is sponsored by Number One Foot. Number One Foot is one of the best replica football jersey websites on the market. They have fantastic qualities at fantastic prices. I ordered some the other day and I got the treble winning jersey for Barcelona in the 14-15 season. The quality Quality is absolutely unreal at a fantastic price. Look at the badge on the jersey, it is fantastic. You have the Nike logo as well, looking brilliant. It has the right tags, the right size, the right material, and it's at a fantastic price. And on their website, they do have the new Barcelona kit for this season with the Spotify logo. You can pick what badge you want on the sleeve, La Liga, Champions League, you can pick whatever number you want, whatever name you want on the back as well. And again, the material is absolutely unreal. Here I have the 2007 Champions League kit for Barcelona as you can see it has the UNICEF logo the Nike the Barcelona badge with the camp new name around it and if you use the discount code boy at checkout you do get 15% off your final order that is b-o-y use it at checkout 15 percent off and all orders over 80 dollars get free shipping as well so go down below top link in the description and get your new football kit today let's start off with the transfer news over the past few days now we haven't been linked with anyone individually per se but we have this one report coming in from sport which is the only thing that we've been uh, you know linked with any other player they came out saying there are 10 players that barcelona will be modern at the World Cup in Qatar and these are the 10 players Bernardo Silva, Diego Delo, Ruben Neves, Juan Foyth, Enzo Fernandez, Benjamin Pavard, Yuri Tillemans, Jeremy Frimpom, Gavardiol and Ilkay Gundogan. I mean what a list this is but I mean the only realistic one I can see happening is Gundogan or Tillemans because they're both going to be free agents. I think Pavard will be a free agent. Next summer we have been linked with him as well from Sport. I'm only showing you guys this because there's nothing else. I wanted just something to put in the transfer a bit. But we have been also linked with Diego Delo and also Thomas Mounier as well. But because Barcelona, of course, looking for a right back in the winter transfer market. But we'll wait and see. This list overall, you could say, is decent. But then again, what's realistic and what's not is going to be the big question. But as we all know, the club will be monitoring many, many players at the World Cup to see their performances and who to go for in the January transfer window. Let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours. First up, of course, the only player who does have a very, very high chance of leaving the club in January is, of course, Memphis Depay. Now, Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo came out saying that Barcelona have very little FFP margin and need exits in January before making signings. Memphis Depay is the most viable exit. Offers will be listened for also Hector Bellerin as well. So, he also talked about sponsors and friendlies, about Juventus, we'll talk about that near the end of the video. I'm still mind-boggled how PK's retirement 
is still not enough to give Barcelona some wiggle room with FFP. I don't know what in God's green earth Javier Tevez is doing in the HQ of La Liga, but it makes no sense to me. All we hear is that, oh, we need Piquet to retire. That way we can have some room. He retires. Oh, Barcelona have freedom in the January transfer when they can sign Bernardo Silva. You know, 300k off the wage bill. PK this, PK that. He leaves. It's official. Oh, wait, we still have no room. It boggles my mind. To be fair, Memphis is sat on 100k per week. You know, he's going to leave uh, in the, in the uh, summer. Might as well let him go now. I understand that. I think the only way the club can get some money for him is if he has an absolutely worldy of a World Cup, which I think will be difficult. But in their group, you know, Qatar and Ecuador played the other day. They both look pretty bang average. Qatar looked dreadful. Ecuador looked okay. So Memphis could do some damage, but I think I don't think he's playing in the first game against Senegal because he just came back from injury. So we'll wait and see. On Bellerin, ain't no one, <laughs> ain't no one offering nothing for Bellerin. We are hearing that Roma. Mourinho is interested in Bellerin, but that's probably when he's gonna be a free agent in the summer. Ain't no one gonna pay a fee for him. Will we let him go for free? I don't see what's the point of that. We still need a right back whether we sign someone or not. I think having covered there is important. Roberto's on one leg, he's made out of broken glass, and his contract also will expire next summer as well. So I don't see Bellerin leaving unless some club is stupid enough to offer us some money. But Memphis Depay's exit is on the table and I think it will heavily depend on his performance at the World Cup. Now a player that has been rumored to be leaving Barcelona over the past few months but now it's kind of calmed down but now could start back up again with the next window opening up is Frankie de Jong. Now Frankie hasn't been rumored to leave Barcelona you know heavily of course you get those crappy sports report oh Chelsea United won him in January all of crap. He hasn't been rumored to leave but there's some big quotes that have come out about him that he's spoken, of course, out on Dutch duty, which I will cover. But firstly, Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo came out saying that Xavi is fully convinced by Frankie Dion's performance in Busquets' position whenever he has to go there and play there. Frankie's determination to stay in the summer has come to fruition and time has proved him right. So apparently Xavi now officially sees Frankie de Jong as a very, very possible replacement long term for Sergio Busquets. Does that put Zuba Mendy and Ruben Neves question marks? I don't really think so, because of course you need two players in one position. Then it has the question marks over Nico. I think with Frankie, I need I need more time to see him in that pivot. I think he's done well this season, but I want to see him in those big moments. You know, your I was about to say Champions League, your Europa League games, your top of the league games, home and away. I want to see him play in the pivot there, because there he usually plays box to box, and then when we play, you know, Mallorca at home or something, that's when he plays the pivot. So I want to see him in those bigger games first. But if Chavi raises it, then I will back Chavi. But De Jong has talked about his uh, future over the past 24 hours, more so his uh, saga in the summer out on international duty, of course, with the Netherlands that had the World Cup. He's spoken to Mike uh, Vergue, who's the number one source around uh, Ajax and uh, in the Dutch media as well. Big, big quotes here. So he's come out saying that I'm very happy in Barcelona. When I play, it's great. And in terms of living uh, their life, is perfect. I see myself at Barcelona for a long, uh, as long as possible. I personally hope to be there for the next eight to 10 years. So that you're talking, you know, mid thirties, which of course is fantastic news for us Barcelona fans. I blame these people, those at Barcelona who wanted me out, but I have nothing to do with them. Yes, they are Barca for me because they lead the club, but I don't see them when I'm at the club. I had nothing to do with them in my daily life. One day a paper published details of my contract, I did not leak it, and the only other party who knew about this is the club. So it had to be from the club who leaked my contract. So that's Frankie basically, in my opinion, confirming that the leaked contract that came out about him over the summer is accurate. Suddenly, there was a letter in which the question was asked whether my contract was still valid or not. Remember that Bartomeu corruption criminal contracts because the previous president made the contract. I found it very annoying that the club did this, but I have no further influence on things. I never got the feeling that Xavi was against me. To the media, he said that he was very uh, happy with me, but there's always been the financial part of the club. I think it was difficult for him to speak about this. He's not the one making those decisions, though. He left the possibility of my departure open as he never came out and said Frankie is staying no matter what the financial situation is. But I really don't put the blame on Chavi. So Frankie's saying, look, however this ever was tough, man, my contract got leaked. They were saying that my contract was not uh, you know, valid. They want, they're basically trying to force me to reduce my salary. And he wasn't happy about that. He also wasn't really happy with Chavi saying that he's, you know, not 100% ruled out from leaving, although he couldn't, because of course you never know the situation financially. So these are big quotes from Frankie de Jong. You know, he's coming out saying that league contract is basically, you know, accurate. But I think now that's behind us, hopefully. But that league contract is real. So he's currently sat on 400,000 euros per week, which is mad 
to be fair and we do have an update on his salary reduction in just a few minutes so big quotes here from frankie but i think that the future is looking good for him at barcelona was in the pivot or in the box to box you look at the midfield market right now ruben neves the tielemans uh, zubamendi the marketing that great and frankie de Jong, without a shadow of a doubt is one of the best midfielders in the world this season i think he performs well from now until may i don't think even if we had the really bad financial situation barcelona would sell him but i think without him sat on 400k a week you never know now the biggest news over the past few days in my opinion if it is true is this report coming in from Luis Rojo from Marca. He's come out saying that Sergio Busquets suggested to the club the idea of leaving Barcelona in January, but Xavi ruled out that option as he wants to continue with him until at least June. So apparently Busquets went to the club and said, look, if you want me to leave, I'll leave in January. Ain't no problem whatsoever. But Xavi said, hell no, you're staying until the rest of the season. I need you. That's him gone. He is not renewing his contract whatsoever. He is leaving in May. I have zero doubts about that whatsoever. The fact that he offered to leave in January is already a statement. Again, he's already come out saying multiple times that, look, if the World Cup was in the summer, I would have reevaluated my future. I would have heavily considered leaving Barcelona. He's only at Barcelona right now, let's be honest, because the World Cup's in the winter. If it was in the summer, I think Busquets would have walked, and I think that would have been a great time for him to walk as well. But I think he'll be here, of course, for the rest of the season. But it's mad that he really offered himself to leave in January because the club either really wanted it or maybe the situation financially. I have no idea, but apparently Boost gets offered to leave in January, but Chavi said no. Let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at Barcelona. Firstly, on the contract renewal of Marcus Alonso. This is coming in from Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo. He's come out saying that Barcelona has already made a decision to extend the contract of Marcus Alonso. The renewal has been approved by both Xavi and also the sports management and the owner remains to address a financial negotiation and close an agreement. So the club internally have already agreed to renew Alonso's contract the only you know way this does not happen now is that the two parties you know Alonso and Barcelona don't reach an agreement which to be honest they will I think if we offer him a renewal with the exact same details of his contract right now his same wage I think he's currently sat on 80,000 euros per week something like that so we've offered him that again I think he will take it 100% but I think there's one of the one of the left backs have to leave whether it's Alejandro Balde Alonso Jordi Alba we cannot have three left backs again this Alonso renewing, and then we're talking about Bald in a few seconds. These are all signals pointing to the end of Jordi Alba. But Jordi Alba already said a few days ago that, oh, I'm going to leave my own terms when I think I cannot offer anything for the club. You know, Iniesta, PK, Chavi quotes, then I'll walk myself because he still has that contract until 2024. So he does have the advantage to be fair to him. But I think the club are looking to push him out. And again, like we've always said now for a few months, all captains must leave by next season. PK is already gone. Busquets is about to walk. It's just Roberto and Jordi Alba right now that I would say are question marks. But Roberto has one year left in his deal. Expires in 2023. So that gives Barcelona the advantage. They want to renew him. He'll renew. If they want him to leave. He'll leave. But Jordi Alba does have that leverage. So wait and see on Alonso. I think 100% he's going to renew his contract. If the decision's already been made by the club and Xavi, it will happen in due course. And he probably will extend for around a year or two. Which is, I think, was off, which I think was promised to him back last summer when we offered him a one-year deal because of FFP, all that sort of stuff. So get ready for Alonso for the next few years. Again, again, as a center back, uh, you know, fifth option, he's not too bad. But I think as a fullback. It's pretty dead, but hey, it's what Chavi wants, and that's what Chavi will get. And the final contract renewal update is on the contract renewal of Alejandro Balde, who is still the priority for Barcelona, despite the fact that he's been called up to the Spanish national team for the World Cup. Now, Fabrizio Romano has come out saying that Barcelona won't extend Alejandro Balde's contract, and talks will take place at some point this week. Now, with him now being at the Spanish camp, will that hinder his renewal? I think it will a little bit, but remember, his agent is Jorge Mendes, who of course has an excellent relationship with Juan Laporta. He'll know what his client wants. I think the renewal is definitely still possible. He comes back from the World Cup, puts pen and paper, you know, before we get kicked off the season again, I think against Espanyol. That would be great, but I think with him now going, it rules out his renewal before the end of this year. If we somehow do it, fair play to the club, that'll be a massive W, but I think 
I think it, I don't think it will happen. I think we're probably looking at Inaki Pena, maybe Arnal Tenez renewing their contract by the end of this year with you know Alejandro Balde going out on the international duty. But you never know. His contract renewal for me is very very big alongside Usman Dembele. It should be cream of the crop, top of the list of priorities at the club right now. You know, sporting wise. So I think the club will do it. I have no worries whatsoever that he will renew his contract. He'll be in the class with you know Pedri, Gavi, Ansu, Arujo. The question now really is when will he renew? Will it be this year? Or, you know beginning of 2023 let's now discuss some updates in regards to salary reductions at barcelona it's been a while since we've talked about some salary reduction of course with the contracts being criminally found illegal in the summer i think the contract of terste again de jong pk longlet it's all over the place it's calmed down over the past few months but it's back again gabriel sans when the Bortipo came out saying that barcelona have started contacts with mark on ter Stegen and frankie de jong to try and reach an agreement for a salary reduction which will help the club comply with la liga's ffp margin of course in the january transfer window both have been receptive and are participating in negotiations so far that does not mean they're going to reduce so ter Stegen and de jong are listening they're talking with the club right now but nothing is agreed they're not gonna sit there saying you know what i'm gonna reduce let's talk they're saying okay what do you want to offer me okay okay i'll go talk that's what they're doing basically so they're listening which i think is important as well but there's not you know a willingness saying that oh yeah i'll reduce 100 what do you guys want you want me to go on 100k a week yep i think so just take sat on a quarter million per week so on 250 per week and then you have the young on 400 which is ridiculous to be fair i think both should be at 200 again that's what lundos is earning that's the cap of the club as well that's we talked about this last summer when mateo eleman said the salary cap of barcelona no player no matter what will earn more than 200 000 years per week i think these are the only two players left over that well uh, jordi alba is as well so yeah i want to reduce that of course as soon as possible at league's finding fair play rules are freaking joke so we'll wait and see i'm not really optimistic about this but i think the fact that they are you know listening is very very important by the way and see how this develops over the next few weeks now on the topic of contracts there is going to be a b team player who will receive a first team contract in january and that is pablo Torre. Javi Miguel from AES came out saying that Pablo Torre will be registered as a first team player starting from January and he'll be wearing the number 16 jersey. Chavi trusts him so much that he was the first one to say no to him leaving on loan back in the summer. The coach has assured him that he'll now be playing more often when the season resumes after the World Cup. Very, very interesting. Of course, we are also expecting that Alejandro Balde and Pablo Gave will be promoted as well. Gave will get number six and Balde will get number 12. I think with Balde, will of course depend on his contract renewal, but Gave already renewed his contract. So we are going to be expecting some promotions in January for sure. Some new numbers as well. I think Gave definitely needs a new number. He's been stuck with 30 now for almost two seasons. Give him that brand new number six and then Balde will most likely will get number 12. But on today, you know what? Fair play. We do have a very low number in the midfield. You have Pedri, Gavi, Gessier, De Jong, Busquets. So you have five for three positions. So you do have one backup uh, ready there. There's going to be Copa del Rey. There's going to be Super Cup because it'll be Europa League. He'll definitely get some minutes in the Copa, maybe against lower opposition teams in La Liga at home as well. Maybe come on some tough away matches as well. So I think it will be a big six months for Pablo Torre. And then, hey, if he does not do too well, does not get any minutes, you could send him out alone in the summer as well. So big few months coming up for Pablo Torre. He will be playing right now, I believe, with the B team during the World Cup to keep up his match fitness and stuff like that. Then when the first team comes back for preseason training, do some uh, preseason games, he'll be involved in that for sure. But he'll be promoted in January and he will be part of the first team. Let's see if he can take advantage of that. Let's now discuss some injury updates surrounding Barcelona over the past few days. Just one update, and it is, of course, a big one on Ronald Arujo. Now, having Miguel from AS came out with a big statement. He came out saying there is an increased suspicion at Barcelona that Uruguay will force Ronald Arujo's return, assuming a very high risk of a relapse. Not even two months have passed since his surgery, and the Uruguayan is already training on the pitch with the national team but Barcelona and Uruguay reached an agreement whereby it was agreed that Arujo will not play any of the group stage matches under any circumstances if Arujo ends up playing a group stage match Barcelona will demand an explanation from the Uruguay Football Federation since the initial agreement will be distraught but Arujo himself has assured Barcelona that he's not going to rush his return and that no time will harm the interest of the club. So the club are worried. They think that, you know what, Uruguay could force him to play, try to convince him, look at the World Cup, last game against, I don't even know, South Korea, Ghana, or Portugal, one of them. Oh, we need to qualify, you gotta play, blah, blah, blah. So the club are worried in that sense. But Gerard Romero came out saying that Aruja will play in the World Cup 
only if he receives a medical green light from both the Barcelona doctor and also the Uruguay doctor as well. And there is two club doctors that are monitoring Alujo's recovery in Qatar and there are good sensations with the player's recovery, but there is no hurry. For me, as long as he's not playing the group stages, I'll be okay. If, uh, if Uruguay make it to the round 16 and then, you know, they win or lose, he'll play one game, 90 minutes, and he'll come back to Barcelona. I... I will be worried if he does play a game in the, in the group stages because you had surgery two months ago. You were told they're going to be ruled out of the World Cup. You somehow made the squad. You somehow even traveled. You're now back on the pitch training. Dare I say it, but I'm getting, you know, French number 23 vibes from this. You know, I I, I can't deal with knee injuries and World Cups, man. It just in center back position. It just makes me twitch. So hopefully Aruho does look at the past and see what, we'll see what happens then of course the club did convince him to do surgery instead of the conservative treatment which would let him allow him to play the world cup so that's also a positive as well so slowly but surely we'll see how this plays out but again if he does play in the world cup group stages against south korea ghana or portugal i would be a bit concerned let's now discuss some of the news surrounding barcelona over the past few days firstly remember the friend that we had against man city back in August for Juan Carlos Untue in ALS research. Now the fee that we have earned from that match, all the money from you know the tickets to sales to you know inventory, everything for that event, the number has been released by Barcelona and the amount earned was 4,362,872 pounds. Absolutely crazy numbers that is. So I think we did a great job in that event. I did make a donation. Hopefully you guys did. If you didn't, you can go donate as well. But absolutely crazy. Big money earned. And this is what happens when the world of football comes together. I think they were projecting to make around 2 million. I believe it was the reports uh, about a month ago. And now they're making double that, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And Juan Carlos Untue was very happy to the press conference speaking about it as well. So big win for Barcelona, big win for Man City, and big win as well for ALS Research. Now with the World Cup, of course, coming mid-season, the club are planning to have another preseason once the World Cup ends around middle to end of December. They want to have good preparation before that game against Espanyol in La Liga. And there have been a lot of reports about who we're going to play in a friendly. We heard about Arsenal, we heard about Juventus. Now Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo came out saying that Barcelona is clear they do want to play a friendly before returning to competitive action. A game against Arsenal in London on December 17th is almost ruled out. Facing Juventus in Turin on the 22nd of December is possible. There's been talks but nothing firm yet. So the club are looking for an opponent. That is clear. Arsenal looking unlikely. Juventus is option on the table. So we'll have to wait and see what that turns out. It looks like most likely Barcelona will be traveling for a friendly match. We're going to go play somewhere whether it's going to be in London, Italy, Germany, France, wherever it may be. The club are looking for an opponent opponent to play one competitive game friendly just to gain some fitness back. You know, make that travel, get used to traveling as a team as well. So we'll wait and see who that opponent is. But at the moment, it's looking very unlikely to be Arsenal and Juventus' name is still on the table. Now on the topic of the World Cup, as you all probably know, Alejandro Balde was called up to the first team for the Spanish national team after Jose Gaia suffered a big injury. Apparently now Jose Gaia is fine. I mean, that was a bit weird. But anyways, Balde is now with the first team with Spain as he did get called up. He did get promoted after that injury for Jose Gaia, which now means that Barcelona has 17. You heard me right. 17 players at the World Cup, which is a record. The most players from a single club ever at this tournament, which I think is crazy. It's a good thing, but also a bad thing. Imagine, I don't even want to mention the, the big elephant in the room. We were talking about it with Arujo, but if we suffer, you know, a fair few, that could be our whole entire squad gone, essentially. So let's pray that nothing happens out there. It looks, there's a very, very good chance we will have a World Cup winner coming back to Barcelona. I am rooting for Argentina, so we got no Argentinian players there, but... It's a very good chance that we do have a World Cup winner coming back to Barcelona, which of course will be good. They'll get to present at the Camp Nou, their medal. Maybe they do win the World Cup. You never know. But 17 players is crazy. I think the record was 15 by Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich did have 17 within Sadio Mane pulled out. And then we had uh, Bali get promoted, bringing us from 16 to 17. So all over the place. I mean, it means a good record to have. It shows that we're the you know, most demand uh, team in the world. But... That one word I don't want to say is lingering over my head, but let's hope and that nothing happens. I do wish all the Barcelona players at the World Cup big good luck and big success. Now, the final topic that I wanted to discuss before I end off this video is probably, you could say, the biggest news around Barcelona over the past week or so. 
and that is the new documentary is going to be coming out in the next few weeks it is titled fc barcelona a new era it'll be coming out on prime video the club released an official statement saying that this december which is in a few weeks, Barcelona and Prime Video will release a documentary called FC Barcelona A New Era. This series will consist of five cha chapters including the inside of the club's story over the last two years from the A2 in Lisbon until the preseason of, you know, 2022-2023 a few months ago. I'm I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about this because the from A2 until August has been the craziest moments you could say. In the history of this club, you know, Setien getting sacked, Suarez leaving, Messi borrow facts, Messi's last season of the club, Bartomeu uh, resigning, Laporta coming in, Messi leaving, Coleman getting hired, Coleman getting sacked, Xavi coming in, all the signings, all the drama, Dembele's, you know, long saga of renewal, even Pedri's renewal, Arujo, Gavi. <sighs> oh my god, I'm, I, I'm gonna watch it, obviously, but I am nervous, I don't... I, like, we see the all or nothing from, you know, Arsenal, Tottenham, Man City. A lot of stuff gets exposed. A lot of stuff, you know, is shown in the limelight. And this could be something big. If Jordi Alba cries at any moment in this series, he's going to get cooked. <laughs> but we'll wait and see. Of course, uh, during this time, we need to win the Copa del Rey. But that's it. <laughs> so it's going to be very, very crazy. Five episodes are probably going to be around 50 minutes long each, I would assume. It's going to be big. We're going to see everything behind the scenes of what happened during one of the worst moments in the club's history. Don't forget about Sergio Barjuan as well. He came in as well for a few weeks. You know, Aguero retiring as well. PK, well, no, no, PK will be afterwards, but it's going to be crazy. So, strive your seatbelts for that. I will be doing a review on it for sure once I've seen all the episodes. I don't know if I'll do it by single episodes. We'll wait and see. If they do it early December, maybe before the uh, games, before the games start again uh, in La Liga. So, I will do a review on it, but I am. Very, very nervous and also very excited about this documentary. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past few days. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discuss. But the main thing I want to first say, of course, is on the salary reduction of both Frankie de Jong and Mark andre Ter Stegen. Do you think they'll end up helping the club and reducing their salaries or not? Secondly, the renewal, Alejandro Balde, Dembele, even Marcus Alonso. I think the club will get them done as soon as possible. I think this could drag on to, you know, middle of February, March time. Thirdly, your thoughts on the house situation right now with the Uruguay national team. What would you do if you were the, you know, the head of the situation? Would you pull him out? First, Uruguay not to use him. What would you implement there? And finally, your thoughts on the documentary coming out in two weeks time. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca.